So we're going live now. Oh, okay. 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 All right. Um, well, welcome everyone. I hope you're all right. Um, I'm in quarantine, which is why I look like I am. Um, but uh, I know that in terms of apologies for absence, we have Paul Scrivens not attending, possibly Rebecca uh, not attending, because I'm not certain what, she's away in Ludlow, and it may be she actually has a, um... that's Rebecca. Then what? Hello. Ah, well done. <laughs> so, I'm so, about 10 to 3 if that's okay so <laughs> what time's the pub open then Rebecca sorry what time's the pub open <laughs> about 3 <laughs> <laughs> all right um, Ian will be joining us Joseph will be joining us I'm pretty certain um, and I don't know about Kelly but uh, let's get started first of all um, are there any declarations of interest from any of us in regard to this meeting? No, in that case, let's move forward. Um, minutes, uh, I noticed in the minutes that were sent out, they're actually the last public meeting minutes. Um, we had two subsequent private meeting minutes. Um, and just going down these points, um, the Community Benefit Society, item number 63 on the on the minutes. Uh, Chilton Hills Community Energy has now been established. It is also a community action group with the part of um, the Oxfordshire Community Action Group. And we have signed a memorandum of understanding with Reading Community Energy Society. So we operate with them as partners in terms of any opportunity <coughs> to develop any, um, any sites. Um, items 65, um, the idea, um, this has been challenging in terms of getting the solar streets up and running, um, partly because of inability to uh, deal adequately with potential households. Um, they have actually had 61 leads. Um, three were rejected, sorry, 16 were rejected as being unsuitable or customer change mind. <coughs> nine, nine are still on hold with a customer wanting to delay. And 26 are undecided, of which 24 have had quotes. They've installed 10 so far. Um, average order value is about 5,700. Um, Rebecca and I have been discussing this, <coughs> and there's a possibility we think we should actually do another. Um, communication, probably a Q&A Zoom meeting. Um, it's, any comments you want to make on that, Rebecca? Um, no, I mean, obviously it is disappointing because we did generate a lot of interest, um, <laughs> which was really good. Um, but then I think COVID has had a, a very difficult effect in the sense that not only did we get locked down so that people didn't want to have people in their homes to install or you weren't allowed to, but also um, with the uncertainties in the economy, I think a lot of people are thinking, I'm, I'm not sure if I can afford this, or I want to see if things are going to be a little bit steadier first before I commit to it. So there are a lot of people outstanding who've had a survey who are interested, but I suspect they're probably still just wondering, uh, you know, about their financial situation, which is a great shame, but not something we could control. But I think as things, the picture becomes a little bit clearer, it's definitely worthwhile doing another one. I mean, starting with 10 is not what we wanted. We really wanted at least 20. But to have got 10, given the circumstances, is not bad. Um, and it gives us an opportunity then to be able to write case studies and so on in order to be able to do some publicity. So it's not the end of the world. OK. Also on item 65 of the minutes, there is Salix. Um, we'll tackle that in terms of uh, the loan scheme against the budget. Um, connected curb and electric vehicle charging points is also on the agenda and retrofit and trees are on the agenda as well. Um, as is item 66, SODC communications and neighborhood plan. So if you're happy, I propose that I sign these and perhaps uh, Fiona, if you can update the items on the agenda based on the fact that they were subsequently communicated to the planning committee as well. 
Uh, so is everyone happy if I go ahead and sign that? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, is there any public participation? Kath, are you aware of any? Not that no. I know. No. Okay. Right. We'll go to item four on the agenda, the Green Deal. Um, the Green Deal is the government's uh, energy efficiency push. Um, and what we need to recognize is that energy efficiency helps reduce emissions. And therefore, I think we <coughs> consider that it should be part of the working group's role to encourage residents to participate. There is a very short time scale. It's open from the 1st of September to the 31st of March next year. Um, we have planned to do things like leaflet drops and press releases, but we feel also there should be a permanent website to which we can point residents if they want information. Um, Rebecca has actually circulated a summary sheet, which you should have seen. Rebecca, is there any comments you want to make about the Green Deal? Um, not really. I mean, apart from that, um, the good news of it is that um, we can target landlords, including private landlords and social landlords, which is good, which has been an issue for us before. Um, it, it, is, it is a good deal and it's definitely worth taking advantage of. Um, and I think we should encourage as many people in Henley to take advantage of it as we can. We have to be very, very quick, though, because, you know, we have less than six months for people to become aware of it um, and to get um, the whole thing decided upon and booked and paid for and the work completed. So there's very little time. But the government website that they've set up is currently in beta version. It might be um, the final version by now. Um, but the beta version is actually quite easy to use. It's sort of quick, simple. It's not as comprehensive as Better Housing, Better Health, but it's a sort of quick and quick and simple, quick and dirty, if you like, um, way of finding out what would be some of the, the best things to install in your home. And given how short the time frame is, then it's it, it, it will do the job for the time being. And I think we need to raise people's awareness of it. Okay. Patrick, you want to make a comment? Yeah, um, I actually tried using the website, and uh, I'd agree with uh, Rebecca. It, it, it's actually very easy to use, uh, and it's uh, and it's, it's unlike cosy homes. It's very simple and straightforward and focused, but it still says that you can get feed-in tariffs for solar, and it doesn't have any mention of the grants that are available. The fifty percent, you know, the five thousand uh, pounds that's available for homeowners for specific. Um, uh, measures. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, the, the, the government has gone into this one half cocked, unfortunately, and people could be misled. I think there's a certain amount of work we've got to do mm. to explain what the benefits of doing the website are and what they need to know in addition. So that will be part of the information we can publish on the website. And also okay. the I agree on that. Jackie, comment? Uh, just to mention that in the round and about magazine for Henley Watlington, um, there is a short piece in the environment section on on this subject on green grants to, to show that um, just so that you're aware there's some press starting to go out to. Okay. What, what we're proposing is that we should have a page on the Henley Town Council website mm. on a temporary basis just for six months. So that, as Patrick and Rebecca have said, we can actually have more information for people. Um, and, you know, the press releases are good, but actually once people have read it, if they forget about it the following week, they've got nowhere to access it. Yeah. So our, our proposal is we should actually have a page on the website. Is everyone happy with that? Yeah. Hello, Kelly. So I've just seen you there. Hi. All right, in that case, Kath will need to, Kath and Fiona will need to uh, liaise with you about that website page. Can I just say that uh, Rebecca and Kelly, you just come in at the top, well, top right hand side of my screen is Fiona Hewer, who is the new project officer for this project and also for the transport uh, strategy. So welcome, uh, Fiona. Um, let's go on to items five on project updates um retrofit patrick and rebecca would you like to talk on this um patrick you've already mentioned about cozy homes as has rebecca so 
which were which of you would like to go first? Well, I, I can kick off. Uh, we've got a meeting uh, on the 11th, I think, it's just this week, uh, to talk about how Cozy Homes fits with the Green Deal, or whatever it's called, you know, the, because uh, I think that's something we need to get on the website, is to, so that we don't, you know, the, the people can choose which way they want to go, uh, and possibly go one way to start off with, and then verge in the other, veer in the other direction. Uh, following that, so I think I think we need to get our story straight on that one. It, for, the, it, for those of you not aware, could you please just describe Cozy Homes and Better Homes, Better Health? Right. Cozy Homes is a scheme that has been set up in Oxfordshire. Uh, it's funded by Bayes, uh, the government department. Um, they've run out of funding now, so they're having to charge for initial surveys. Um, the idea is that mm -hmm. they manage retrofit cradle to grave that means that they organize for a surveyor to come in for a, a, an assessor rather to come in and talk to you about what you may or may not want to do in your house they create a report for you then you select the measures that you'd like to implement and they will then project manage that for a fee and the fee is about 10 percent of the contract price i think we we need to confirm that um uh, on uh, when we have our meeting um, later this week. Um, the idea is that there are guarantees, the guarantees in terms of the quality of the people that do it. You don't have to worry about chasing around, finding tradespeople, they will do that for you. And at the end of it, they hold the people to account. So you don't have worries that if something goes, if the you know, pipe bursts and water goes all over your house, they will bring the tradespeople back in again and they will make sure the insurance is paid. So, so I think in that respect, for, for some people, it would be very good because it takes the worry out of it. The cost of that is effectively the insurance is the fee that you pay them to do it. So I think that's where we need to make it very clear to people in Henley what they should, you know, which one they might like to choose um, because it does potentially fit. They're, they're looking at ways of using the funding available from government to help to fund this, but they're not, I, we'll find out about that. Uh, but it would be good to have that, that sorted out, as well as how the whole thing dovetails with Better Homes, Better Health, because that is actually far more interesting because the full £10,000 could be available to fund projects under Better Homes, Better Health. So we, uh, Re uh, Rebecca, are you on that call uh, this week? You're, you're on mute, Rebecca. It's good to I, see I think it's Thursday rather than Friday. Um, Thursday, but yes, yeah. I, am, I, yes I am on it. Great. Because I think, I think it, we hopefully will find out quite a lot that will help us to convey information to the public in Henley. Rebecca, would you like to comment on better homes, better health? Because I think that is for rented properties. Well, well, not actually, not really. Um, Better Housing, Better Health is aimed at people who are on low incomes, okay. but it needs to be people who are low income homeowners. So therefore, it has a very, very narrow focus, um, particularly in Henley, because and, and maybe there might be elderly people who have a, a house, own a house, but um, don't have a, a high income, for example. Um, but um, it does narrow the focus of it quite a bit. Um, I, that's why I think the Green Deal with the opportunity to have up to 10,000 pounds worth of work done, um, which can also be done by landlords and also by, te by tenants, um, it, it's rather more open, I think. Um, I think Better Housing, Better Health is a great idea. It also gives people lots of other advice as well about um, also changing their energy supply, that type of thing, um, and also what other grants are available. But unfortunately, I think the focus me means that it's not quite as flexible as the Green Deal. Okay. Rebecca, I think you, not Rebecca, sorry, Kath, I think you experienced Cozy Homes, is that correct? It is, yes. Did you have any feedback? Um, I haven't had any work done via Cozy Homes yet. I think they've run into problems with having um, tradesmen to carry out the work. So we're waiting for quotes 
uh, for external insulation, in fact. But we went ahead with IDEA for solar panels because that was moving more quickly. Okay, all right. All right, uh, well, that clearly comes, the cosy homes and the Green Deal fit together. So thanks for your comments on that, guys. Um, can we then go on to energy audits? Um, first of all, we've got a budget, which we'll talk about later in the agenda, which includes energy audits for schools in Henley. Um, I want to talk about that separately, but also so you're aware, um, as a result of uh, Chilton Hills Community Energy becoming a community energy group, and also Greener Henley becoming a community energy group, we had the right to offer two energy audits. And uh, those of you that have been involved in this, you'll remember that we actually circulated a list of uh, buildings and we decided to go with uh, D2 and we YMCA. And those discussions are now in place for undertaking those energy audits. Um, what's interesting is that a Low Carbon Hub in Oxford has come back and said that it'll be dependent, the time will be dependent on whether the assessors feel they can actually make the visits and whether the people in the buildings themselves are comfortable for someone else coming outside and under what circumstances. So exact timing is still to be decided, but um, we'll keep you up to date on that. And uh, we'll feed back on energy audits for schools later in this meeting. Um, electric, Vehicle charging points, item seven. Hello, Ian, how are you? Hello, sorry I'm late. Uh, That's all right. And Fiona is, at least in my screen, to the top right. So she's the new project manager for this group and also a transport strategy. I don't know if you've met her yet. Hello, okay. Fiona. Um, I just wanted to remind you, Tony, that um, we were going to talk about trees also under the project updates item. Sorry, I missed that. Okay, thank you for that. Um, they're, e they're easy to miss. <laughs> not when you're doing work on it, Patrick. Um, and it's really down for you to talk about it. Yeah. Um, the tree planting is a means of mitigating emissions. It also requires a lot of organising and agreement with landowners. Um, and Patrick is now part of an Oxfordshire-wide group. Uh, before Patrick comments, uh, Donna would like to talk. No, I'm, I'm just going to actually ask Ken this question because it's not slightly deviating from the thing, but it's just that planning um, park side. Had that been refused? Because there's all those trees up there, isn't there, that are being... No, not yet. Hasn't gone... Uh, come hasn't come up yet. Right, OK. No, carry on. Is that, uh, Thank right. you. Thank you, Donna. Yeah. So, uh, Donna, I think that's on 24. Uh, well, that that comes out that 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 will come out um the uh so the progress so far is we've got a project ongoing with the firm called ribbon uh, who is a maidenhead firm uh and we should i think with help from uh henley college up that to about 500 uh trees and shrubs um so that's good news and also moving ahead on some more work on the chalk bank with the new sustainability environmental officer for the the, the gap uh, next, uh, so we'll hope to progress on that. But the 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 other thing I'm doing at the moment. Sorry, is, Patrick, I missed that. Who would sustainability environment officer for whom? Oh, uh, next, folks, is the is the uh, works in with the groundsman uh, works with parks uh, to and he's got a part time role uh, looking after environment and sustainability and uh, and wildlife and everything okay. else. And so I'm, I'm hoping to meet up with him to discuss work that we're going to do potentially this winter on the patrol bank. Okay. Um, so that's in progress as well. Uh, and and then the most important of all, perhaps, uh, are two things. One is, yes, the Oxford group, uh, Oxfordshire group, uh, we're looking at mapping tree opportunities across Oxfordshire, including the Chilterns and including our neck of the woods as well. Um, Who's the we, Patrick? Oh, well, uh, there's a group, uh, it's actually the, the, the Lord Lieutenant of Oxfordshire has set this group up and the objective is to map out the whole of Oxfordshire and they're starting to work on it. And in fact, the, the, uh, there's the, the, the record centre, I can't remember the, 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 
there's a uh, what sort of a na nature record center uh, doing the work to do the mapping. Uh, and the idea is to identify parcels of land where there are opportunities for either reinforcing hedging or planting trees. So with that work, it then will point us in the right direction to go to landowners and to suggest that there could be work done on that. Um, behind that, there's a lot more work to do on grant funding. Uh, and uh, there's quite a lot of money being pushed forward by the government at the moment to fund trees and planting trees. There's also a lot of money coming from HS2 to mitigate all the trees they're cutting down, um, unfortunately. But um, so that, that work's got to go on in the background. But then the other thing is close to hand, there's uh, one of the landowners locally is interested in rewilding uh, part of their land. Uh, and I'm meeting up with them on Friday on site uh, to, to see what we can do. It's a short term measure, um, probably 30 years maximum, but a critical 30 years. And if we can get standard trees growing over that period, even if they crop the lot, in, in 30 years time, we will have sequestered that carbon. You know, so, so that's good news. Good. So what's our target number of trees, Patrick? <laughs> well, uh, within the parish, it should be 10,000. I said 1,000 a year. So this year, I can pretty well guarantee 500. Last year, we had 500. So we're building a deficit at the moment. If this comes off, then that would probably wipe out that deficit. We'll have had at least 2,000 trees planted uh, in the first two years. So, so in that respect, that's good. Obviously, progress within the wider, the parishes, I mean, I need, really, we need more people because I can't do that by myself. I think we need to somehow to spread the word and get activists, individuals within parishes, within communities to start Sort of carrying the flag, start doing the work of contacting landowners and getting in touch with people, and seeing what can be done. Jackie and Kath, um, is there any way in which we can involve other parish councils in this, or are they already involved? They're not. <clears throat> Kath, you have a view. Um, I, I mean, we had the that meeting, didn't we, for parishes? We could we could follow on from the contacts that we made when we had them all over in what November, November, yeah. October, November. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that would be my first thought. Unless people have got, I mean, obviously Jackie's a different parish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I had just written a note to bring it up at the. Uh, we had our parish council meeting last night, but at the next meeting, I can I can raise this subject. Um, okay. Uh, it's going to be obviously different between the parishes because some parishes will already have quite a lot of of trees and it that you know um yeah but we could definitely as kath said uh, we we could follow on from that meeting we had and at least use the contacts we have from that okay we probably should involve the the, the oxfordshire group in that meeting as well patrick yeah donna donna you had a question or comment contact lorraine because she's the parish SODC person for Rotherfield Greys and mm. um, Nettlebed. Is she Nettlebed? Is it what is it, what parish is it? It's Greys, Woodcote and... It's not Nettlebed, but it is Greys and uh, uh, Peppard Greys. I think she comes in Woodcote. Yeah. Fix and Assenden are in that, Donna. Oh, so sure. she's, yeah. she's a uh, district councillor here. Yeah. And, so jo she... and Joe Robb. Yeah. And she's green, so... Jackie, oh. could you could you then liaise with Patrick about uh, talking to Lorraine, Lorraine Hillier? Yes, uh, perhaps we need to speak separately what yeah. the strategy should be agree, as agree, to yeah. going out to all the parishes together and then what people can do individually yeah. and how we want to do that. OK, yeah. thank you, Patrick. Let's move on then to item seven, electric vehicle charging points. Uh, I don't know how many of you saw an article which was in the papers last week. It came from a, an international uh, clean transportation body, which said that uh, Britain has only about 5% of the uh, on-street charges it's going to need by 2030. 
Um, and actually, I think it's quite a significant issue for us in Henley that we actually have adequate on-street charging. Um, the working group has explored two electric vehicle charging points. Uh, the on-street charging uh, discussion is now in the hands of Oxford County Council. Um, and I know that Rebecca raised the issue of Oxford, the County Council being involved in this matter with John Howells. Would you like to make a comment on that, Rebecca? Um, yes, I mean, it, it, we, I did point out to him that Henley was having great difficulty. Henley had already gone to um, the lengths of having an invitation to tender put out and had had a, a winning tender um, as, as a result. Um, but we were being obstructed by Oxfordshire County Council who wanted to have an overarching strategy for the, um, for the county as a whole. Um, John Howell said he could see no reason why they should be able to obstruct what we do in Henley. Um, so it, it was a bit of a throwaway comment, but we could probably use that if we wanted to really push this. Patrick? Could I suggest that we contact Yvonne Constance? Who? Yvonne Constance is the run, she's the councillor, she's got the cabinet, she's responsible for environment and transport in yeah. uh, Oxfordshire County Council. And yeah. I've spoken to her before as uh, on the railways, on uh, uh, HVAC, we went up to talk to her about the branch line and she was sympathetic and uh, in fact got her officer to write in a piece on, the, uh, on a consult consultation on our behalf. So I think that She's the one that controls basically all of the areas we need, you know, that we need to influence. Okay. And she is I, I, I think in that, I think it's a good point, Patrick. I think it should come from Stefan. Um, I've been involved on three occasions with the council officer who's running this project. My concern is that, um, first of all, they have got as a lead for the project itself, the lady that did Oxford, Camp, Oxford, Oxford City Council's charging points. I'm very concerned that they're going to try and get one scheme that fits all, which is unlikely. I'm also concerned that their time scale is slipping, and I don't think it's going to anything really happen until next year if we're lucky. But I think if we're going to be in contact with another councillor, it's better coming from yeah. Stefan. Um, and therefore, okay. I think what I suggest is that we, we write for that. Sorry, Patrick, you had a comment? Yeah, no, I said I went uh, on the tra on, on the railway, so I just went direct. Uh, and Yvonne Constance is one of those people where if you hit her on the, if you get it right, and she's interested, she thinks you're serious, she will uh, give you, she will, uh, you know, give you the time. Okay, all I feel is the guy that we're dealing with is a stroppy so-and-so. Um, that's a polite way of putting it. And actually, I think she might just feed us back to him in which case we'd be stuck in a, a rut again. So that's why I'm thinking we'd better go via, via Stefan. Donna? Sorry, just to let you know, Kelly's left because she's had another meeting. She's got her attend, so. Okay, thanks for that. All right. Okay, thanks for that, Donna. Um, the other um, electric vehicle charging point is one looking at Henny Town Council car parks. Kath, could you perhaps update us on that? Uh, we've had, um, Joju have been round to do surveys on various sites, and I think we're just waiting for a report back on that actually at the moment, aren't we? Um, we, we? I think we need to just think about how that will affect the different, um, sorry, <laughs> um, how it will affect um, the town council properties. Um, we've all, we already got it through RNA to look at uh, putting charging points on Mill Meadows back in May, I think. Um, but there are other sites we're looking at that may have financial implications for the council. So that's something we want to consider quite carefully. Um, and maybe we can put something to the next finance committee in mm. about six weeks time on that. Okay. I am concerned that Currently in Henley, we've got the two charging points on the Waitrose car park, and there's another one or two off the lane in, um, in Grays Road, and that's all we've got that are public charging points. 
Um, and I think from a residence perspective, we're at risk of saying we're concerned about climate emergency, but we're hindering those people that might want to go for charging points. So I think there's a, a risk to the council itself. Jackie? Uh, yes, I might be recalling this from somewhere else, but have we ever talked about uh, talking to Tesco's, for example, to see um, if they would uh, put, I, I know it's not, it's maybe not within what we can do, but the Tesco site would be a good place to also be trying to put some points. Yeah, okay. Wait. Donna? Yeah, I'm Ken, did that? A planning application in, or did oh, I imagine? Did Tesco's put a planning application in for charging points? Or not, did that I... I'm, not that I'm aware of. Because I, the... I could check up though. I thought, but we do not Henley Town Council own that land anyway. We own it, yeah. Can we not put some points in there at the bottom, say at the bottom of the car park, about four or five charging points? Because that would be a really good thing to do. We can certainly look at that. I'm in contact with Tesco on uh, solar panels as well. Um, really good. But uh, I think, <laughs> Kath, as far as I'm aware, the issue about the Tesco car park, it's a long way from the meter, unless we have it closer, closer by. So perhaps, um, perhaps let's, let's take it forward and let's look at it in more detail, Kath. Yeah. All right. And the, the car park at the one stop, could we not put a point there? Um, they've looked at that. They're concerned that, that there's not enough um, likely use because they're concerned that most people in the vicinity have got drives. And therefore, if they wish to go for charge and they do it on, on, on drive. Right. There's the car park at the top of Crisp Road. You could put one up there. I did have concerns about because the land adjacent to it needs, the fencing needs to be fixed which I've been badgering so hard about and they've still not done anything about fixing the little minor fencing. But could we put a charging point there? Who owns the, the, the land? I don't know whether it's Soha. You'd speak to Soha. I think it's Soha that own it, but there's a little car park at the top of, is it Simon? I get the rose confused. The one that goes down, is it Cooper? Cooper Road. Yeah, it's Cooper Road. Yeah, I think you're right, Cooper. Definitely yeah. not Simmons. The little okay. car park there, we could put a couple of charging points there. Let, let's have a look at that, Catherine, if you may. Um, let's go on then to community groups. We've had, um, and we, sorry, let's start again. There are other groups with similar interests to the council's working group. Uh, they include Green and Henley and also XR, Extinction Rebellion and Henley. Um, which appears to be more conciliatory than the national group, particularly based on this last uh, last week's activities by the national group. Um, I think Ken, uh, Patrick's point was that we need to get other people involved on trees and therefore Green and Henley is someone we should actively engage in that respect. And they've actually been helpful for leaflet drops as well, certainly for things like solar streets. Um, XR has asked us if we would give a short talk on the working group at their event later this week, but we've said we're unable to do so because of uh, myself being on quarantine and also holidays. Um, they've then said, could we actually give, give a short statement? I'm happy to write that based on our target areas, but I'd like your, the, your comments on whether we should do so or not, particularly from the councillors. Can I say, I'm not a fan of XR at all. I don't like how they behave. I'm sorry. I really don't like how they behave. And I don't want to be facilitating people that want to behave like that at all. You know, I believe in being peaceful. I don't believe in creating blocks and stuff. Um, to, and I cannot bring myself to um, align myself with people like that. I really have strong issues on it. At, I really do. You know, even though I'm quite environmentally minded, I don't like how they behave. I think they've gone about things they do the wrong way I'm sorry and you know I can't and I will not help facilitate them in any way shape or form you know I'm I, I can't I just it just really great with me and I I can't help them at all so I'm you sure. wouldn't you wouldn't speak at their event for us next week I, 
I will not at all because I don't like how they behave. They spray painted our pavements, um, which we had to then clean. I'm sorry. And um, others, okay. I won't help them at all. I'm sorry. That's all but right. I'm okay. very minded. I am very green minded. But yeah, not no, no. that's all right. That's so all right. I Ken or Ian, do you have any comments? I, I, um, I don't know the people, uh, Tony, but um, I'm similar minded to, to Donna. Um, I would need to, to know that um, there are reasonable people like the Green Henley people. And I think one or two of them may not be. So um, it, it's a difficult one, Tony. I okay. think you might have to make the call on this one. That, okay. um, yeah, you, you know, the Green Henley people are fine. You know, they're, they're no problem. It's just the, the these other ones. Um, you don't know what you're going to get for your money, I'm afraid to say. OK, Ian, there, are a, range, there are a range of people in uh, Extinction mm. Rebellion and, uh, oh. and, and a range of different ways that, that, that they operate. Uh, I'm sympathetic with the frustrations they feel at the progress that's being made you know, to mitigate or to deal with reverse climate change. Uh, and you, you can argue long and hard about whether or not uh, you know, direct, direct action such as you know, blockading uh, uh, newspaper distribution is, uh, is helpful or not. Um, they, they do succeed in getting climate change on the agenda. And in that sense, yeah. you know, they, are, they are good. Uh, but so, sometimes their actions are... Uh, are counterproductive. So I've got, I've got, I'm broadly supportive, but I have mixed feelings about some of the actions that they take. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't object to, uh, uh, to you know, speaking with them, or, or even in support of their aims, even if uh, you know, we, we could say we question some of their methods at times. Okay, Jackie, do you have a comment? Um, yes, I'm. Um broadly in agreement with all the mixed comments actually that have just been said i think it might be a good idea to decide what the henley town council position is in relation to how how we are involved or not with xr as a group uh, rather than the individuals as in if henley town council decide XR is not a group that the council has a relationship with, then that makes a decision for everything. Um, I don't know I, what you I, think about that. I, I, sorry, I do have an... I, uh, I, 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 uh, just relax, Donna, just relax. Count to ten. I, I just can't, and it really upsets me because I'm very green-minded, very, very green-minded, but I just can't bring myself to... I don't okay. necessarily me... mean that the town council should decide now that they would be involved on the weekend, but I think overall it, this is a this is a um, a subject that perhaps there should be a position made on it because okay. this is going to come up in different ways in the future. Can I just ask Kate, uh, Rebecca to comment because Rebecca introduced me to Kate, Kate Aldridge. Um, well, my, my own feeling about Extinction Rebellion is that in, in the grand scheme of things, Extinction Rebellion have a part to play. And their part to play is by um, bringing the whole climate thing to public attention um, and to pushing governments to change policy. Because unless we change policy at national and international level, then what we, we can't do things really at local level. Things need to be, we need to have the right policies in place. Um, we, things, the Green Deal, for example, that needs to be put in place at government level. Um, and then we at local level can implement that and um, make that more successful. So I, I think they have a part to play. Um, I completely understand Donna's viewpoint and that of other people in that the tactics they choose, although they are chosen for maximum publicity, um, can be a real issue for a lot of people. And I understand that. Um, if you can't get to work because the train has been, people have super glued themselves to the train or they've blockaded um, the newspaper where you work, 
um, I, I completely understand that that is going to upset an awful lot of people. Um, and I don't condone that. Um, I think for, for, from our point of view, I think it is actually, particularly given what's happened over the weekend, I think it's a high risk strategy yeah. for us to have any overt partnership with a XR. That's mm -hmm. the conclusion that I've come to. And although I know that the people locally are far more moderate mm -hmm. um, and wouldn't do the kinds of things that we see happening nationally, I think that um, saying, uh, I think distinguishing between local XR and national XR will be absolutely impossible. Um, and I think, I think it's a very high risk strategy for the council okay. to um, publicly ally themselves with the XR in any way, I'm sorry to say, but I think that is the case. Patrick, you had a, a hand up. You're on mute, Patrick. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, something I think I feel that we should be aware of is that our objective is to, obviously within the council, but also within the community, to engage with people to do the right thing, to do greener things, whether it's retrofit, planting trees, whatever it is. And my real concern is that if we are tied in with the brand XR, that is going to break, is going to give us a huge uphill struggle with probably 50% of the community or more in Henley. And when I'm dealing with landowners and farmers, and the rest, I, I think it will make my job impossible. Um, just to say that in the trees group that we've got, the Go Planting Trees, mm -hmm. I've got five or six members of XR that help out with planting trees, but they come as individuals. And I see no problem with individuals that belong to XR. If they want to come as individuals and support climate working group, the climate emergency working group, or whatever, or any of our initiatives, I don't see any problem with that. I also wonder, and, and, and I find it, why is it that XR somehow wants to legitimize themselves in Henley when the rest of XR is doing the exact opposite? And I think that that is questionable. Uh, and I think we need to, we need, we need to consider our interests as a climate working group first. Okay. Jackie, do you have a comment? You had your hand up, certainly. Yes, I can't remember them all. <laughs> uh, one, I think we, we are linked with XR in as much as they were about raising a, an awareness in a completely different way about the climate emergency. And we are working on the other side to that in how we do it in getting councils to lead the way in climate emergency and I do think that they have some success in raising that awareness I'm on a personal level just to say what I think of them I'm not a member of XR because it's not the way that I wish to go about this subject but I also think that XR Henley as Patrick has just been saying have not decided where they are as a group in Henley they they're fighting against the um, national position in, in how they're meant to be um, constructed their um, protests. So um, I, I have lost my thread there. I, um, I'm going to come back because I've just okay. lost the point that I wanted to say. Sorry. Donna, do you have a quick comment to make? Otherwise, I'll close this off. I can't support people that want to go and fly tips. Uh, fly post businesses in Henley and um, in well not intimidate as such but when they put fly posters on people's businesses I cannot support that okay. at all I understand um, that point totally I'm going to close this this part of the discussion because I've got a clear view of, of the, the consensus um, yeah. I will have a, a contact with Kate Aldridge whom uh, Rebecca mentioned I'm not going to commit the working group to anything um, if there's anything I think that might be worth worthwhile considering, I'll bring it back to the group for discussion, okay? But otherwise, we'll just take it that uh, we'll have a a loose common interest, but not necessarily a, a tight uh, area of activity. All right. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thanks for all your comments. Appreciate that. Um, can we go to the budget update? The budget for the, uh, the working group has got is about twelve thousand um, pounds. We will spend some money on leaflets for the Green Deal, um, but we also want to try and encourage the schools to look at energy efficiency, um, and therefore we want to use some of it as a grant towards a percentage of any energy efficiency initiatives that arise as a result of the energy audits. Um, would like this group to confirm that that is going to be um, a acceptable approach and therefore that can be taken forward by Kath to another committee. Is there any objection to that? No. No? Okay, we'll go forward with that then. Let's go on then to neighborhood plan. Sorry, Patrick. But just one caveat. Um, I would like a little bit of money for uh, mapping. Uh, I've worked out now finally how to get into the land registry and how to identify uh, um, land in, in rural areas. And so I would like to spend my six pounds a, a plot or whatever it is, 12 pound a plot on, on, on getting the deeds uh, for, for, for each of the plots that we identify. Mm, I think we've allowed you about Hundred hundred odd pounds for that already. So yeah, no problem. Okay. Yeah, great. All right. Patrick, you're uh, not looking for building plots, are you? Be only chance. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> <laughs> They've already been bought, unfortunately. I thought I we just. I, I think there's one very close to you, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. All right. I thought we were supposed to declare uh, interest. No, I have no interest at all. None of, and Ken knows it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go on then to the next item, which is the neighbourhood plan and the need for a uh, neighborhood plan to consider climate emergency actions. Patrick, I believe you're doing something on that. Would you like to bring us up to date? Um, I've, been, I've been sort of uh, waylaid by these various planning um, white papers. And so I haven't made the progress I'd have wanted to, but essentially um, what we want to do is to have a series of environmental policies. We've got, prototypes that we can use to copy to put them in um, and and it's just a matter of uh, of doing the work uh, loosely I co-opted Jackie and Rebecca to help with this so when I when I uh, get out of this mess we're in with these various planning issues uh, I will get on to that I would say that um, it's um, from a planning point of view it's not looking hugely favorable uh, because the build, build, build uh, slogan uh, potentially could go completely against what we're wanting to do. But still, I think we do need to have those policies in there. And we can also cover, I've been asked by Jody to look at wildlife and sustainability in a broader sense. So I think we do need to make sure that those policies are included in the draft for the new neighbourhood plan. Mm -hmm. I'm personally happy to contribute if you wish, Patrick, okay? Okay, I think it's probably a question of of doing a bit of editorial work, finding out what's out there, and okay. then getting a group together on Zoom, uh, okay. and we may well co-opt you. Okay, all right. Um, the last item on the agenda was supposed to be um, a private meeting. Uh, Kath, as there's no one else participating, I don't think we need to go private for this matter, is that right? We're um, live on YouTube. You're live on YouTube currently. In that case, let's close that down because the reason... You need to vote on your um, on item 11. You need to read that out, Tony. Oh, right, okay, thanks for that. So, the exclusion of the press and the public. To consider the public and the press be excluded from the remainder of the meeting in accordance with the Public Bodies Admission to Meetings Act 1960 as publicity would be prejudicial to the public interest by reason of the confidential nature of the business to be transacted. Are we all in agreement? Yeah, great. Okay, thank you very much. Kath, if you could 